Hi, I'm Steve, and I'm in the Goit Valley, and this is Goitbridge. Well, it used to be. Underneath the water is a town called Goitbridge. Anyway, we're not talking about that today, because we're going that away, looking for an abandoned hall. I'm approaching the hall and it's there on that hill. Um, so I'm not far, this is the old road that obviously leads to it. It's got these things all down it here. Now I didn't know what these were, but someone told me that that's when you get running water coming down the hill, it diverts the water off to the not the road. So that's decent, I didn't know that, that's cool. And it makes sense now because I'm going up the other way and they're facing the other way. There's a bit of a bit of a river down there. Apologies, I'm out of breath. I'm very unfit. And there's a there's another one. Don't know how that would have affected a horse and cart coming up here, but hey ho. Let's have a look at this, shall we? Because obviously that goes underneath this road. So this isn't a built embankment. Is there any infrastructure under here at all? Like a oh look, there is. Look, there's a bit of wall and uh, like a culvert of some sorts. So that's not that's that's cool. No wind today for once, which means you get decent sound quality from me. But that's nice to play in in the summer. Anyway, so the hall is up here. There's loads of rubble all over this like side of the hill. Guessing that was once part of the house. I've been here quite a few times before, so I know exactly what to expect. But uh, I just want to show it off, really. It's a cool piece of somewhat local history, and it doesn't get covered enough, I don't think. Although no doubt, no, my luck, Martin will do a video on it just before I upload mine. There's another one of these thingies. Right, I'm going to just cut the camera off and keep walking because it's a zigzag path and that's boring to watch. I'm going to try and do a dramatic reveal. Well, I tried. So this is Erwood Hall, built in the 1830s for the Erwood family. I think that's pretty much a given. It was ruined in the mid-1900s, 1920s or so, when the valley down at the bottom, as I mentioned, got flooded. So let's have a quick look around this ruined hall in the middle of pretty much nowhere now. It used to be a town about a mile that way, but not anymore. So let's have a look what we can find. To be fair, a lot of the ruin these days is just quite low walls. Don't know how much of this is preservation where they've capped it off. But the main standout features of this ruin are a few bits of corbelling laying around. And you've got these fabulous arches on the south side. Um, these obviously were to let the sun in back in the day. And now they're just standing there. Very picturesque as well. The sun's come up at just the right time to explore these ruins some more. So let's have a look at the front door. In fact, let's have a look at the front door from the front door side. So we're looking in. So, the front door. This here used to be up there. I slightly fell, but that's fine. When the house was demolished, I'm guessing they put this family emblem crest here. And half of it is buried under the ground. So, this is the old front door. There's actually still hinges here that I can actually grab onto with my bare hands. And right now, the phone that I'm looking at and talking into, hopefully I'm still in frame, is on the old front porch. That went further down than I thought. This is the front door. That's the actual front door. These are the front walls here. And that way is, uh, hang on, north. East, south, yes, this is east. This is the east front door. And this massive Oreo in the middle here, this is the old family crest. Now this used to be up there when, you know, there was a door frame. And I'm guessing when the house got demolished, they took it down, plonked it here and buried it in the ground. Anyway, so let's have another look around this abandoned, well, mansion, hallway. I don't know, this, this stone's got wave effects, that's cool. We see that we're getting towards the kitchen area and oh some steps, lovely jubbly. No doubt them. Yeah, we get towards some steps. 
Hang on, I'm going to stop recording because it's people and I'm not that confident. Oh, this is nice stonework, isn't it? Quite like that. So where am I? Well, I'm in the kitchen. You can tell because someone's tried to clean the side of the wipe. Anyway, this is the old kitchen area. Uh, if you look at the map, it's this part here. Um, you can tell it's the kitchen area because they've got this floor bit here. Now, this is angled like this, so you can basically have the water drain down the middle and then into the drain. I don't know why this one's facing the wrong way, but there's obviously a reason. And you've got this nice flooring here. Easy to sweep the, uh, the blood and offal away from when you're cooking your meat and your beef and your other assorted animals. Looks like there's been some cooking here as well. Hmm, campfires. So I've come over here as well to have a look at this feature, which I think might be a staircase. I don't know. I've not tried to go up it because I'm wearing red chinos again. Got an old pathway here still. If you follow this around, actually, you get to an old graveyard at the top of the hill. I'm not going up there yet. That might be a whole other video. Um, but here we go. You can see here it spirals up. And um, I'd like to go up there, but I don't think it would either A, take my weight or B. Look at this. He's chopping back. Get your scissors out and chop it so I can go up there. Turn on battery saver to add 5 hours and 13 minutes. I'd love to add that amount of time. I've really used all my battery just here. I've got a lot of footage. It's a very interesting haul. Very, very, very atmospheric. I mean, if the weather was a bit worse, it'd be even better. That's the only time I've ever wanted bad weather. Oh, look. Steps. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you again on Abandoned. Bye-bye.